Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, I'd like to compare two different 15 inch woofers. And before I get started on my measurements, I'd like to read a quote from Philip Newell's book on recording studio design, fourth edition. And in the, on page 521, he, discuss, he discusses intermodulation distortion even further and says the multi-tone testing, which is the intermodulation type of test where you have two frequencies playing simultaneously has shown that the total IMD can often be around four times greater than the measured THD, so harmonic distortion. The implication is that in many cases, what people frequently believe to be harmonic distortion of music is actually predominantly intermodulation distortion. This helps to explain why there, have been such, there has been such poor correlation between measured THD and the perceived distortion. The perceived distortion is more likely to be IMD, which is neither being measured nor ad adequately quantified. What is more, various studies have shown that IMD can be irritating at only 10% of the equivalent THD because of its inharmonic nature. Therefore, producing four times more of something, which is 10 times more irritating, could suggest that the IMD problem is four, 40 times greater than the THD problem. So I thought that was uh, very insightful considering the uh, recent tests that I've been doing on intermodulation distortion and its subjective correlation to perceived clarity. So let's get started on this test. Um, this one's a little bit different in the sense that I'm looking closely at JBL's differential drive motor technology. And I first came across this driver uh, in the 12-inch version, which I thought had tremendous clarity for a 12-inch. It sounded clean right up to uh, around 800 hertz. And so I purchased the 15-inch uh, subwoofer version, and I wanted to look at its intermodulation products, but I didn't have a comparable 15-inch on hand. What I did have is a uh, RCF 15-inch mid-bass, um, so I did the test with this driver in hopes that uh, two things, that it would maybe reveal what, what would be the, the lowest measured intermodulation product from either of these drivers with, with, with respect to their intended bandwidth. And also, um, there should be some overlap between the drivers that we can draw some correlation between uh, which motor technology is superior. Um, IMD products typically are a result of the motor design and so to be fair um, the RCF actually is using a uh, copper plate in the motor to reduce IMD distortion um, so let's get started on the tests uh, so we have the frequency response and uh, nothing of noteworthy except the JBL is actually producing a significant uh, resonant peak at 1.3 1.3 kilohertz um, so if we move on to the spectral burst decay we can in fact see that that is a significant uh, resonant mode uh, likely from its uh, large dust cap so um, we can see here that they both uh, perform quite well in the spectral uh, decay within the um, up to around 500 hertz looking at the group delay uh, the RCF does have um, less group delay if we're, lo if we're looking at uh, 100 hertz for example um, we have a three millisecond uh, group delay at that particular frequency which um, with the JBL we're looking at about 3.5 milliseconds so very very subtle difference but also worth noting with the step response um, we're seeing very similar decay times uh, the RCF uh, showing uh, faster decay uh, the impedance curve isn't really showing anything um, uh, too revealing other than we, we do see uh, the, the resonant mode at 1.2 kilohertz with the JBL and we're also seeing uh, some uh, less severe modes there at around 1 kilohertz with the RCF. So I'll start with our harmonic distortion. I've done a side-by-side -side here and um, both are um, not showing anything really other than maybe the RCF is having a harder time producing the, the distortion numbers that the JBL sees. Um, increasing the SPL to 100, um, we can see that second harmonic starts to rise uh, quite significantly, especially in the 100 hertz region with the RCF. 
and the uh, JBL remains quite low, um, particularly with second harmonic uh, remaining at only 0.1%. So moving on to um, intermodulation distortion. So in the previous video, I noted how I was able to conduct this uh, sweep, uh, so to speak, and it's essentially uh, nine tests where I do the multi-tone test and then I plot in Excel where the intermodulation percentage lies at, at the respective frequency. And so one thing worth noting here, even, even at 90 dB, the JBL is actually producing some significantly low intermodulation percent numbers. Um, the RCF is, is really struggling to get below 0.3% uh, even into the, the mid base and upper mid base region. When we increase the SPL to 95 dB, you can see here that they begin to di diverge um, in their performance characteristics. So you can see the around 88 hertz, uh, the JBL is producing less than 0.2%. Uh, Increasing it again to 100 dB, we can really highlight, uh, first of all, where these drivers like to be in terms of the frequency bandwidth. So the JBL uh, would strictly be classified as a woofer in the sense that you can see uh, here with the orange chart above uh, 250, 300 hertz that it, the intermodulation distortion quickly starts to rise. So you're going to want to cross um, this this woofer at around 300 or 400 hertz to avoid uh, this distortion peak that we're seeing here. Um, however, when we look at the RCF, we can see that it doesn't perform uh, nearly as well in the base region as the 15 inch, as the, as the JBL. So um, what we could conclude from this is that the, uh, the JBL ultimately is producing lower distortion within its intended bandwidth, um, which perhaps speaks towards the differential drive technology. Um, so what, what I think you could conclude from this, or at least it would give, give me um, a chance to reflect on the fact that the differential drive is also used in other products by JBL in their mid base and also in their mid range uh, drivers. I know there's a, an eight inch uh, differential drive um, mid range that uh, would be interesting to look at and to see how it performs with in terms of intermodulation distortion. Um, just to conclude this video, um, like I, I said, I'm gonna continue to discuss this topic and for interest's sake, I've decided to compare the RCF, um, which is uh, a mid bass, and compare it directly against my uh, front horn number 1274 uh, mid bass horn. And so this, this is using two 12 inch BNC mid bass drivers, the model 12 PE32. And so I decided to do a similar test uh, at 100 dB at one meter. And you can see here that the mid bass horn is uh, achieving very low intermodulation numbers from 80 hertz up to around 600 hertz. And so uh, I should also note as well that the BNC mid bass drivers uh, don't have any copper plate or sleeves in their motor. Um, so we're, what we're seeing here is we're achieving extremely, no, extremely low numbers uh, despite not having the um, features in the motor that are designed to reduce distortion. And so it uh, only stands to reason that you could achieve even lower numbers if the 1274 mid base cabinet used drivers that had copper uh, shorting rings or um, using even JBL's differential drive technology. So I uh, hope this uh, was an enlightening uh, experiment or test for you. Um, take care and have a great day.